তারা যদি চায় তারা ঢুকতে পারবে আর কি তার সাথে সবাইকে ওপেন করি নাই এমন কি আমরা কাউকে তেমন খোলা মেলা জানাইনি আর কি কম জানিয়েছে মানে বিশেষ করে এটাতে আপনাদের অসুবিধা হয়নি যে আপনাদের টেকনিক্যাল সেশনগুলো যখন রান হয়েছে তখন কি আপনারা এমনি পার্টিসিপেন্ট সবাই সবটাতে যোগদান করতে অনেকেই এমনি জানে কিন্তু ওপেনলি এটা আমরা ওইভাবে জানে না কেউ জেনে নেওয়ার চেষ্টা করলে যারা বিশেষ করে আমরা ইউনিভার্সিটি তারা আমরা ইউনিভার্সিটিতে ছিলাম তো फारमेंट पा जाए आयोजन करते गोलोख प्रश्न उत्तर रविन्हीं <laughs> जथेष्टूल <laughs> significantly increase করেছে এখন তবে ওই যে যখন কমলো তখন যে রিল্যাক্সেশন গুলি দিয়েছে কমিউনিটিতে ট্রান্সপোর্টেশন থেকে শুরু করে সকল জায়গায় ওই রিল্যাক্সেশন স্ট্যাটাসটাই আসলে এখনো কন্টিনিউড হচ্ছে সেটাই আমাদের এখানে ভিতরের অবস্থা খুবই ভালো ছিল মানে কোন পুরো অস্তিতে জিরো কেসের মতো ছিল কিন্তু হঠাৎ করে ওই নর্থ আমেরিকার একটা ফ্লাইট মনে হয় এরা এলাও করেছিল আচ্ছা তো ওখান থেকে যে ফ্লাইটের ক্রু তাদেরকে বলা ছিল যে কয়েকটা হোটেলে তারা থাকতে পারবে বাট তাদের জন্য খুব কড়া করে ইয়ে ছিল না রেস্ট্রিকশন ছিল না যে নিজেদের মতো তোমরা ভালো করে ইয়ে করে থাকবা সেলফ আইসোলেশনে কিন্তু ওরা এসে সেটাকে অবহেলা করেছে ওরা বাইরে ঘোরাঘুরি করেছে আর ওখান থেকে সর্বনাশ করে দিয়েছে ড্রাইভার দেন বিচে চলে গেছে একদম আবার শুরু হয়ে গেছে কালকে রাত মুশকিল ব্যথা তবে কি ব্যাপার এরকম ব্যথা হওয়ার কোনোদিন হয়নি ঠান্ডা হঠাৎ করে দেখলাম সকাল বেলা লেগে গেছে আমি আর যা সাহস করতে পারিনি আজকে তো বাসাতেই যোগদান করলাম আর কি এই অবস্থা আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি প্রফেসর আদনান কিবার স্যার জয়েন করেছেন আসসালামু আলাইকুম স্যার ওয়া আলাইকুম আসসালাম ওয়া রাহমাতুল্লাহি ওয়া বারাকাতুহু আমরা বুড়া মানুষরা জয়েন করতে পারলাম স্যার 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 আমাদের মধ্যে আরেকজন মুরুব্বি মানুষ আছেন প্রফেসর ডক্টর ফাইজুর রহমান ট্রেজারার গ্রিন ইউনিভার্সিটি অফ বাংলাদেশ দীর্ঘদিন রুয়েটের অধ্যাপক ছিলেন উনিও স্যার আপনাদের সমসাময়িক হয় এরকম হবে আর কি স্যার আসসালামু আলাইকুম 
আলহামদুলিল্লাহ আলহামদুলিল্লাহ <laughs> ওনার অনেক অবদান আছে এই কনফারেন্সে পিছনে অনেক চেষ্টা করে উনি এটা উতরাই নিয়েছে হ্যাঁ ইটস এ টিম ইটস এ টিম ঢাকা ইউনিভার্সিটিও যত আমাদের এই কনফারেন্স যেটা হচ্ছে ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ফ্যাকাল্টি দ্য ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড ইট ওয়াজ হিম সাজ্জাদ ইজ ভেরি এক্সপেরিয়েন্স ভেরি স্মার্ট ভেরি ডাইনামিক অ্যাজ এ হিউম্যান ইজ অলসো ভেরি 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 গুড দ্যাট ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট আপনি তো ভালোভাবেই জানেন আর কি আগে থেকে উনি রিসার্চের অবস্থা জি স্যার প্রায় কত 25 বছর থেকে চিন স্যার আমাদের আমাদের গাইড স্যার কি আমরা সবসময়ে ফলো করার চেষ্টা করি আমরা মনে হয় ইয়া রাবিয়া আমার মনে হয় আই থিং আই থিং উই হ্যাভ রিচড आवर টাইম উই ক্যান স্টার্ট ইজ ইট ইয়েস স্যার ইয়েস স্যার উই ক্যান স্টার্ট উই ডু হ্যাভ টু টাইপস অফ পার্টিসিপেন্টস ওয়ান জয়নিং অনলাইন এন্ড অ্যানাদার ফ্রম দা টেকনিক্যাল সেশন রুমস ফিজিক্যালি সো Uh, 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 both people are i think uh, 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 joining gradually after their lunch and as well as from online how oh, we can start rabia thank you so much sir uh, now we are going to start our session keynote session 9 on smart solid state transformer for future power grid good afternoon everyone It is a wonderful moment to extend my greetings on behalf of Green University of Bangladesh to the distinguished keynote speaker, respected session chair, moderator, the valuable author and participants. I want to convey my gratitude to all of you at this keynote session. The session code is D2K9. of second international conference on sustainable technologies for industries 4.0 this is rabi akhtar rabu lecturer green university of bangladesh i am your host for current session we are delighted to have among us professor dr mohammad faizur rahman sir from department of tripoli green university of bangladesh as a moderator of this session I am grateful to welcome you all at this keynote session to be delivered by Mohammad Rubil Islam from University of Wollongong Australia. This session will be chaired by Professor Dr Mohammad Adnan Kiber. We have 35 minutes for presentation and around 10 minutes for discussion. May I now hand over the session to honorable chair professor dr mohammad adnan kibir sir thank you all thank you rabia khan thank you everybody for present and i was going to be connected afterwards if there if somebody is a little bit late it happens to be the case all around the world now i would request professor dr rabiul islam uh, from the university of technology sydney kolalong university university of technology sydney uh to present his paper but before that i need to know i need to talk a bit about him he is a very learned person uh probably many of us don't know i did not know it as well so he received his phd degree from the university of technology sydney in 2014 australia in electrical engineering he was lecturer at rwec in 2015 2005 and then was promoted to full professor in 2017 then we lost him we mean the bangladesh lost him 
he went gone to Australia in 2018. He joined the School of Electrical, Computer, and Telecommunication Engineering, University of Oulong, Australia. Uh, he's a senior member of IEEE. His research interest is in the field of power electronic converters, renewable energy technologies, power quality, electrical machines, electrical vehicles, smart grid. That is very important these days and in the future too. He has authored and co-authored more than 200 papers. That's very distinguished achievement, including 50 IEEE transactions or journals papers. He has edited or written five technical books published by Springers and Taylor Francis. He received more than 20 awards and fellowships, scholarship, including Australian government and their research fellowship. Most of us know that. He worked in many areas and received several funding from the industries and governments, including Australian governments. And one of the important areas he's working on now an optimal electrical drive system for plug in hybrid electrical vehicles. And the Australian Renewable Energy Agency project, which is about 10, about 11 million Australian dollars, that's great. And his Intel Smart Sodium Storage Solution. He's serving as a editor of IEEE Transaction and Energy Conversion and IEEE for Energy Letters, and associate editor for IEEE Access. He also served as a guest editor of IEEE Transaction and Energy and Conversion, and IEEE Transaction Applied Superconductivity, and IIT in Electrical Power Applications. So you all can see he has a vast knowledge, experience in academia and industry. Uh, we are thankful and grateful to the God and to him in a sense that a Bangladeshi of this high level achieved this level of highness in both academic and industrial field. And we hope they ask the Australian people, because he's in Australia now, now in a sense, because there is no with us anyway, and the world will benefit from his intellectual levels and services he's going to serve. In, in, in fact, the world, especially the smart grid, which I have, why I have some interest to see how it goes on. So I would request Professor Muhammad Abdul Islam to deliver his keynote speech and enlighten us about the work he's been doing for long and a very useful one too. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Professor Muhammad Abdul Islam, please. Okay. Come forward and deliver your keynote speech, please. Okay. So could you please uh, tell me the presentation slide? It is yes, it's it's quite visible and your sound is also clear. Please. Yeah, we could yeah. see both. You can hear your sound, thank you. And as well as you can see the slide there, okay. the beautiful background. Thanks, uh, session to your Professor Adnan Kivir. So, um, and a special thanks uh, for uh, introducing um, to our um, participants. And also thanks to uh, Professor Rajak and Professor Fajr Rahman uh, for giving me the chance to actually discuss something in this uh, conference. So uh, um, before going to the main topic, um, I would like to thanks all the participants to join this uh, keynote session. And uh, you already heard that um, the title of this presentation is a Smart Solid State Transformer for Piece of Our Grid. So as the time is uh, very limited, around 35 minutes, so uh, I, uh, I think it is very difficult for me to uh, discuss um, something uh, with this topic, I mean, you know, this is a really a very vast uh, and broad topic and um, very difficult to summarize all the things within this time frame. But I'll try my best to uh, discuss or cover all the uh, things uh, within this time frame. So first, if we have a look, what is transformer? What is the, the traditional transformer? 
right? So we know transformer is a passive electrical device which can transfer electrical power from one circuit to another circuit without changing the supply frequency. And this type of device commonly seen now behind the roads or beside our house or many places we can see this type of figure or this type of devices. So this device can be used to step up the voltage or step down the voltage or for isolation purpose, right? So if we consider very, very fundamental circuit, that means if we consider a single phase transformer, then its uh, equivalent circuit can be drawn in this way. That means just primary coil and then secondary coil. And it's um, very, very simplified version of uh, its uh, structure can be seen in the bottom figure, right? Where we see the primary winding shown in red color and the secondary winding it is shown in blue color, right? When we apply that uh, input voltage in the primary side, then current passing through the primary coil and then voltage, uh, I mean, plugs um, that primary, actually plugs um, cut the secondary wind windings and voltage induced across the secondary coils. And if we connect, uh, if we uh, connect a load or some uh, element in between the secondary terminal, then we current will flow through the secondary terminal, then you see, this is the operation of a transformer, right? We know this basic principle, right? And uh, this uh, sort of device, I mean, this type of transformer are very common, widely used in our transmission and distribution network. For example, in uh, the generation side, we use for all this step up purpose, and for the distribution side, we mainly use to step down the voltage, right? But uh, what are the issues with these transformers? Of course, there are some issues. For example, it is heavy and bulky. You know, what's the size and you know, weight of this type of devices? So here you can see um, the weight and size of um, different types of um, traditional transformers. And also it has some other issues like uh, environmental uh, problems, right? For example, the transformer used uh, transformer oil, right? So that transformer oil, it is not environmentally friendly. So there's the another issue. And you see is transformer having significant amount of transformer oil so this is the another challenge. So on the other hand, if we look at the power quality issues in our power transmission and distribution network, then especially in our developing countries, we can easily realize that there are some power quality issues. For example, voltage unbalancing or the sag, soil, and fluctuations, right? And also harmonics, Impulsive transients, oscillatory transients, noise problems, those are very common in our transmission and distribution networks. And what are the causes, right, for this type of uh, disturbances or power quality problems? For example, for the SAC, it is, it, it is due to fault or uh, direct online motor starting in the industries. And harmonics, due to power electronic loads. So we know day by day, the number of power electronics equipment or devices in our house or in our industries or in our offices increasing significantly, which significantly affecting our um, power grid. So what are the effects due to those power quality issues? You know, you see, uh, if there is a voltage unbalance, then definitely the problem like motor overheating. And uh, for harmonics, due to harmonics, it is also uh, hit our motors 
and capacitors and also different other you know, types of you know, problems, right? So then the traditional transformer, so you know, it cannot actually you know, minimize or handle those power quality problems. In addition, actually for this traditional transformer can be affected by those power quality problems. I mean, both sex, swells, unbalancing, harmonics, those sort of things. And traditional transformer, it cannot be used in DC grid. I will explain in details within the next couple of minutes why we need transformer in DC, DC grid. So at the moment, we have only AC network, but in future, we'll have DC network or DC grid due to the large penetration renewable, due to the large penetration of electric vehicle, due to the large penetration of storage in the network. And definitely, or of course, we need DC grid. So, and also the control capability power flow control. Our traditional transformer cannot handle those situations. It, it cannot handle, it cannot control the power flow. So there are lots of limitations in addition to size, cost, loss, and reliability. In addition, if we look at the uh, power from the renewable sources, then you see our inverters not only inject the AC power, it also inject a small amount of DC power or DC current to the grid. So it is already tested that, and we found that inverter feeding some DC current to the grid. For a single inverter, I mean, single PV inverter, it's not a problem, but when thousands or hundreds of inverter feeding power to the grid, then what will happen? Then the summation of those small DC currents may affect the quality of the power and grid power. For example, in some, um, I mean, sunshine hours, when enough generation, I mean, I mean surplus generation compared to the local demand, then what will happen? Then power can flow in reverse direction. That means power can flow through the transformer, distribution transformer and feed to the main grid. Then what will happen? Then there is a chance to saturate the transformer core that will actually damage the transformer. That will actually affect the reliability of our power grid or power network. So our traditional transformer cannot handle those situations. Therefore, we need advanced technology in the future. Here, we see a future um, Great. So based on the ongoing changes in our transmission and distribution network, we can definitely predict this type of uh, grid in the future. So where we will have DC grid, we will have AC grid or AC network, we'll have a low voltage DC grid, we will have a low voltage AC grid, and the large, uh, large penetration of renewable here and there, large penetration of electric vehicle, large penetration of storage, and also other power electronics loads in the system. So for this type of network, if we still consider the traditional transformer with other accessories, for example, Statcom, DVR, and other uh, protective devices like line filters, then definitely our 
network will be more and more complex and not efficient and also costly. Here you can see, if we use traditional transformer and we want, if we connect our uh, electric vehicles, batteries, renewables, you see, then what will be the network looks like in the future? So then we need more and more other equipments in addition to the transformer. That's why I mentioned our network will be more bulky, more costly, more inefficient in the future. So what is the solution? Solution could be, we can think how we can build a small device or a small component which can handle all the things, all the actually functions. Here you can see just a single device. It can connect um, solar, I mean, renewable sources, storage, or electric vehicles to the grid directly without using any other devices in between. And it can, it will have a bidirectional power flow capability. It can uh, connect to DC network or AC network. It can handle, um, it can automatically minimize the power quality issues. So maybe we can think whether it is possible or not. Okay. I can give you one example, which can clear uh, how we can realize that sort of things. For example, think about the development of a smartphone and compare the functions or operation of a smartphone with that of the very old one. Yeah, so the very old trans, I mean, now, uh, old mobile phone that actually can um, handle just only calling someone or something like that, just like a phone, but a smartphone, it could be uh, a camera, it could be a laptop, it could be a radio, it could be a television, right? many more. So one device replacing many, actually devices. Nowadays, we're not buying any uh, paper-based newspapers, right? We are not buying radio. We are not buying camera. Just single phone, mobile phone, can actually do all the jobs. So our solid state transformer could be something like that. Okay, back to the uh, real scenarios. If we consider the um, wind farm, wind farm usually installed far from sea bases, around 10 to 30 kilometers far from sea bases, right? And the NACLI, that means this is called the NACLI, Nectly actually houses the electrical components. So Nectly basically 80 meter above the water level. And this Nectly basically um, consists of like generator, power converter, then transformer and control circuit. How big the transformer is say compared with them with a size of a man, it is really a very big, right? And several tons in weight. So in those environment, it is really, really important to minimize the size and weight of the necklace of the wind turbine. So how to minimize? That's the question, right? Because 
the size and weight of the necklace significantly affect the installation and the construction cost of the wind farm. And also, as I mentioned, transformer require transformer oil, which has one uh, another uh, problem that is called now. Um, that means that transformer oil requires regular monitoring. So how we can monitor the transformer oil in that uh, location? That means we need helicopter to monitor the transformer oil. So in this case, we need the technology without transformer. How it possible? Yes, we can use medium voltage converter. Previously, we used low voltage converter here. That's why we need step up transformer to step up the voltage from low voltage to medium voltage level. So here, if we can use a medium voltage transformer here, then we, know we can directly connect um, or directly fit the generated power to the medium voltage grid directly without using any step up transformer. So what are the possible converter circuit that we can use in this area? Yes, you see the, um, in the conventional or traditional convert, I mean traditional wind power generation system, uh, people use two level converter. Two level means phase voltage has only two voltage levels. That means either 200, positive 200 or negative 200. On the other hand, uh, recently, now uh, people are focusing on the multi-level converter topologies. That means it has uh, multiple voltage levels, and voltage levels can be increased or decreased, yeah, by cascading number of devices uh, in the circuit. And compared with the uh, the two-level converter voltage output waveform, this one is more closer to the sinusoidal reference signal, right? So uh, one important thing that I uh, want to mention here, that is um, what's the, what are the control parameters for multi-level converters in order to improve the power quality? In terms of power quality, you see two-level converter, it has only one parameter to control, that is the switching frequency. On the other hand, for multi-level converter, it has two control parameters, one switching frequency, another one is number of voltage level, okay? By increasing or decreasing the number of voltage level, we can decrease or increase the, uh, the power quality, right? And maybe someone may ask the questions whether it will increase the cost of the converter or not. No, it will not increase the cost because uh, in multi-level converter, uh, with the multi-level converter topology, we can use um, very low cost, mature, lower voltage rated devices instead of, instead of um, uh, high voltage rated devices, right? So in this way, we can also reduce the cost of the converter as well. So there are three types of uh, multi-level converters available. Mm, I mean, uh, the main multi-level converter topologies that is called neutral point clamp. Another one is flying capacitor. So neutral point clamp, it requires a number of uh, auxiliary diodes. Flying capacitor, it requires a number of say, auxiliary capacitors. And also we have another type of multi-level converter that is called modular cascaded multi-level converter. And in this converter topology, there is no auxiliary diodes or auxiliary capacitors. Therefore, the number of components compared with the cascaded, uh, I mean, neutral point clamp and flying capacitor the modular multi-level converter requires less number of switching devices. So here we can see the output voltage waveform for different multi-level converters without using any line filters. So without any line filter, you see the output voltage waveform from different uh, multi-level converter. 
topologies. And here we can see the output from this whole form um, of uh, multi-level converter with this one with the nine level, this one with um, 11 level, this one for 15 level, this one for 19 level, this one for 21 levels. And if we look at the quality of the output power, then you see for 19 and 21 level converter output voltage THD, it is less than 5% who is satisfied the IEEE standard. That means without using any filter, we can connect, we can fit power to the grid. Okay, but question is, if for this type of multi-level converter, we need multiple isolated and um, isolated DC sources. You see DC source here, here, here. So every module has this module require DC voltage source, which is a very challenging task to manage this huge number of uh, isolated and balanced DC sources. So therefore, maybe we can consider high frequency magnetic link here, you see, single primary, multiple secondary. And this is high frequency magnetic link. It is not stepping out the voltage. It is just for isolation and to create single to multiple sources. Then each source can uh, create a DC source for each module. And so it can solve that problem, okay? But uh, with this one, there is a problem. Problem is here only one magnetic link Although we are talking, we are saying this is the modular type, modular cascaded type, but due to this uh, magnetic link, common magnetic link, uh, this topology no longer be modular, right? In construction. So if we want to maintain uh, or keep the modularity of the converter, then we can go with this type of topology. For example, you see, here, this is one module, this is another module, and this module having all the components, and we can just cascade, cascade just uh, by using nut board. Now, within a couple of minutes, we can just connect these points to create, to design this type of converter. That is, it is a fully modular concept, right? And by increasing the number of modules, we can increase the output voltage levels and power handling capacity. Okay, so uh, this type of concept can be implemented in our laboratories. And um, we already tested and we found very interesting uh, results uh, with uh, those uh, proposed convert topologies. So these are the output voltage waveform without any filter circuit. You see, it is inherently sinusoidal in nature. And uh, this type of topology can be also used for solar applications. That means solar photovoltaic power plants. We can be designed um, with this type of concept. It is also modular in uh, configuration. So, and uh, uh, this is, uh, platform also validated uh, for solar applications. And uh, we also found uh, very interesting results. Yeah, yeah, you can see some uh, results of, uh, for uh, this type of um, uh, technology. So here we can see uh, just excitation voltage uh, and also the gate pulses for the high frequency magnetic length in Bada. And here we can see the current and voltage for the high frequency magnetic link. And here we see the phase voltage and current. And here we see the line voltage of form. And uh, these results uh, for five level converter. So therefore you see harmonics or TSD is 15.80, right? So um, if we increase this uh, voltage levels, then definitely we can in, uh, reduce the TSD level further, yeah. Okay, so now- so um, We have 
uh, only some a few minutes left so please you have to be a little fast we have just 5 minutes left okay thank you jabi uh, i will try my best okay yeah so here you can see now the structure for uh, a hybrid system as i mentioned uh, to you before uh, what we will see in our fusion grid or fusion network so in the right side you can see uh, that figure again so in the fusion we need a hybrid uh, i mean a system which can be interconnected this ac low voltage medium voltage uh, storage uh, ac load dc load uh, renewables wind lots of thing can be uh, connected or interconnected in the network so therefore we are thinking something like that you see here this one i mean uh, left side uh, figure you see now uh, the leftmost side that can be uh, interconnected to the medium voltage ac grid then we will have the high frequency magnetic link that is actually for isolation and for uh you see just for uh, create a link it is not stepping up or stepping down in the voltage levels and then you see by using power electronic things we can interconnect the energy storage here and also we can create a low voltage dc bus here which can be interconnect with the pv wind dc loads and also in here you can see the low voltage ac bus here which can be interconnected with the wind turbine pv ac load as well so in uh, to do this network we can now uh, this system we can or this configuration we can say okay, is a solid state transformer because you see it now it is totally based on the solid state devices and it has the capability to step up the voltage or step down the voltage and also it can also handle or interconnect dc load ac load storage and other renewable sources either electric vehicles or many more okay so um, but to implement that topology that concept what are the challenges challenges you see we need to use large number of sensing devices so definitely someone may uh, raise the question like uh, what are the uh, sensing losses or um, the conduction losses what are the, what is the reliability what's the efficiency okay so in this case um, uh, if we look at the recent industrial development there is the silicon carbide uh, mosfet silicon carbide mosfet its uh, size you see compare if we compare the size and weight of silicon carbide device with the traditional silicon based igbt then you see how small it is it is shown in figure 6 the comparison can be seen in figure 6 okay so it is much more smaller and much more um uh, efficient the Uh, table the this table shows the power loss uh, in those two uh, type of devices one silicon carbide another one uh, silicon based igbt that means our recent uh, industrial developed um, uh, silicon carbide mosfet is more efficient and um, it can handle more power and can um, and also it is a very uh, is mm, smaller in size and lower in weight okay so another thing is uh, the high frequency magnetic link so how we can minimize the losses in the high frequency magnetic link that means we need a, a high flux density and low core loss magnetic material so we investigated that and we found that amorphous and nanocrystalline are the a recently developed material which can be used in these applications so this type of material basically um we can collect as a ribbon sheet thickness 20 micrometer um so there is another challenge to develop uh, magnetic link with this type of uh, magnetic material 
So what are the shapes uh, that we can choose to develop the high frequency magnetic link? So there are lots of options we have, but we can't go all with all the um, topology. Therefore, we need to um, select the shape, okay? Based on the, I mean, availability of the magnetic material, this magnetic material, as I mentioned, it is 20 micrometer thickness, very thin. So therefore, we have to uh, care about, um, I mean, in the care in the development process, and also uh, size optimization. That is the another issue because our main target to develop a efficient, compact, and lightweight uh, system. So we can develop this type of uh, platform in our laboratories to develop this type of core in our environment. That means we can collect uh, that ribbon sheet from the industries. There are some industries um, in USA and China as well. Um, from those industries, we can purchase those magnetic material and then we can develop. Then next to things, uh, we can test the performance of those um, magnetic material, especially with a, to check the modeling, okay? And also, we need to calculate the leakage and magnetizing parameters. We know there are different type of open circuit and short circuit test that can be used to calculate the leakage and magnetizing components, right? So another issue is uh, how many uh, input source that we can be, we can connect to the input side. That means uh, broadly we can say um, multiple active bridges. Okay, we know the uh, title dual active bridge, that is a very popular concept, okay? But in our hybrid system, we need multiple uh, input-output combinations. So therefore we did investigate how many input uh, ports or how many output ports uh, could be the optimal uh, uh, design for this type of applications. So we all uh, need a, a, a deep analysis on that topic and uh, then based on that, we need to calculate the parameters and then we need to design the control uh, topologies. Yeah. Okay, and uh, here you can see some uh, test results, uh, how we can calculate the parameters and then how we can design the control uh, uh, topologies to um, get the, our uh, expected results. And another important thing is the thermal modeling. As the multi-level converter requires or uses a huge number of system devices. So, um, uh, and also we use the advanced level switching technique. So whether uh, the equal power losses for all the switching devices or not, that's the important thing because if uh, one Swiss uh, dissipating more power, that means uh, that is- actually... Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Our next session chair is waiting. Okay. So you have to, to do hardly a bit. Sorry, yeah. Uh, sorry, two minutes. Uh, within two minutes, I will try to finish. I have only one or two more slides. Okay. Yes, sir. So, okay, uh, yeah. So therefore, you see now, we need uh, thermal impedance modeling. That means whether our uh, switching technique uh, actually, um, actually, um, actually, it actually dissipating same amount of power to all the components or not. Because if one switching device with uh, more thermal stress compared to uh, the other. Uh, Professor Islam. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt uh, uh, you. I know that there are very important points. So this is the last, but... last slide, last slide, yeah, sorry. Please, please, please. Yeah, so then we need uh, advanced um, actually modulation technique and also we need uh, modification, right? So here you see some uh, uh, modulation technique or switching technique is good uh, in terms of uh, loss distribution, right? 
and uh, here you can see this one is, is not really good in terms of a loss distribution among the switching devices. And um, therefore, we can develop, we can modify this uh, switching technique uh, to uh, get it now. Um, I mean, um, I mean, equal distribution of the power losses among the switching devices. Okay, so. Uh, and other power quality issues as well. Okay, so this uh, actually now um, we already received a uh, big funding from Australian government to implement this uh, concept. So we are now developing um, a solid state transformer in our laboratories. So uh, here you see some photographs from our side. So this is our laboratory environment. So you are welcome to now uh, visit our laboratories or work. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Thanks for your participation. Uh, Professor Adnan Kivar, sir, please. Yep. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether I'm connected yet. I think I'm connected, but I can see it. I thank yes. you, Professor Rabiul Islam, for a nice presentation. It was very important. As Professor Rajak said, we are very interested. But unfortunately, it seems we are very out of time. I don't think we have a time for a question to be asked to you. Uh, thank you anyway. Thank you so much for being with us and be part of these important organizations. And thank, thank you, oh. Professor Abdurrajak and Professor Abul Islam and Professor Fajr Rahman and all the participants who are being present here for this important, very important to me, in fact. We uh, don't have time to put question. Anyway, I, may I request for Ravi Akhtar Rabu to display the certificate as actually uh, they have come here, especially they are presenting a very interesting topic he has presented. It is very interesting. A lot of challenges are there, especially development of the high frequency. This link, uh, this one is the, uh, challenging, especially development of the material, ferrite core, amorphous material, nano crystal material, these materials are used. Anyway, uh, since I don't have enough time, I cannot talk on the issue anyway. Uh, please, Rabi Akhtar Abu, display the certificate. Uh, uh, sir, I believe that uh, Rabi Akhtar Rabu is facing some connectivity problem okay, 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 due okay. to the Zoom, okay, Zoom okay. Uh, ID problem. So uh, on behalf of Rabi Akhtar Rabu, uh, okay. uh, I would like to express uh, the thanks to our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Rabi Islam, our session chair, Professor Dr. Adnan Kibar, uh, our session moderator, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Fajr Rahman, and all the participants attended here online as well as from the physical uh, rooms. Uh, uh, please allow us to send uh, the certificate of contribution to Professor Rabiul Islam and certificate of uh, participation as session chair to Professor Adnan Kibar, e-certificates will send through email. Oh, so thank you email. very much. Yes, okay. sir. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much, sir. Have thank a nice you. time. Be safe yeah. in Corona. Yeah, yeah. 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 Raman, sir. Yes. Raman, sir. Yes. Raman, sir. 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 কাজেই এখনি আমরা এই সেশন থেকে লিভ করব আবার এই সেশনে আবার নতুন করে ঢুকব সো দ্যাট এই কানেক্টিভিটি বা জুম এর যে ভার্চুয়াল সেশনের যে প্রবলেম সেটা যেন না থাকে ফজর রহমান স্যার এর আগে একবার হয়েছিল না যে কিছু সংখ্যক লোকজন অন্য একটা রুমে গিয়ে বসে আছে তাই হয়েছে মনে হয় আজকে ওই ঘটনাটা ঘটেছে তো আমরা এই এই জায়গাটা আমরা করব তো আপনাদের আবারো ধন্যবাদ রবিউল ভাই দেখা হবে কথা হবে সামনে আবার থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ সো মাচ Okay, bye. See you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.